Hey, what's up? Andrew Kramer here for creativecow.net. And in today's tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to create the look of the new Apple iPod Nano commercials. However, if you're watching this, say, five years from now, you may not know what I'm talking about. So, I took the time to import this. Okay, here is the commercial. Listen... Listen to the music, yeah. Yeah, so uh, you probably can't hear the music, but uh, let's forget about that. Uh, the point is, these uh, cool streaks here are kind of the focus of this tutorial. Now, I'm not going to pretend to know exactly how they created this effect. Well, I don't know. However, after a little bit of time in After Effects, I was able to come up with something that looks close and is at least impressive in its own way. So... Let's go ahead and move on. Interesting that I stopped on the pink swirlies. Let's stop on yeah, so see, let's stop on a blue color. All right, moving on. What we're going to be doing is exactly this. Oh, let's let's bring that up full screen. All right. I don't have any music for this, but you get the idea. All righty. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to create a new composition, and we're going to make it 720 by 480 square pixels, 30 frames per second, duration 300 frames. And we'll call this Nano Add Add. Perfect. Um, okay, I just want to point this out. This is, I think, think maybe one of the first tutorials I'll be actually using a third-party plugin and that third-party plugin is trap codes particular download the demo if you don't already have it I recommend it first thing we're gonna do is create a new layer so I'm gonna choose new solid and we're gonna make it comp size and we'll make it black okay and we'll call this background BG I'm gonna duplicate this layer edit duplicate and we'll call this particles. So that'll be our layer that we're going to actually apply our particle effect to. Then we actually have to set up a couple of other things so that this will all work. So bear with me. We're going to create a new adjustment layer. And this adjustment layer is going to be the adjustment layer we use to kind of create the coloring look of the swirlies, as they're now called. So now in the future, when you refer to this, you're going to be referring to the swirlies in the nano commercial. So keep that in mind. Uh, we're going to call this uh, color effects. And now I'm going to create a new light. And this is just going to be a point light. And we're going to name this. This is important. You need to name this emitter. Okay. Particular is going to use this light as the emitter. So I'm going to hit OK. Perfect. Look at that. And the final thing we need to do is create a new camera. And we'll just set this to 35 millimeters, okay? Default. Hit OK. Okay, so with the layer selected, I'm going to choose Effect, Trap Code, Particular. Anyway, the point is it's a full-on custom 3D particle generator. So basically, what we're going to be doing is using Particular to generate those swirlies from earlier. So let's go ahead and start setting it up by default the plugin looks like this well look at that if we stopped right here I'd feel pretty comfortable about what I've shown you but we'll just keep going for the heck of it anyway so first things we need to do is bring up this emitter drop down and let's just go down through the settings so particles per second that's how many particles come out per second so you can have a lot you can have a little it's up to you now the emitter type is all these different things. We are going to be using a light. So we're going to be using this light to emit the particle. So if I select this light in the comp window and I move it around, you see the particles are moving because they're emitting from this source. That's important because a light can be pushed around in 3D space, go far away, come up close, you know, zip around. Um, and we have more control over it because After Effects will actually allow us to view it in the multi uh, views that we can uh, control. So we're able to move it back and forth and all that good stuff. So moving on. Back to the particles. 
we're going to turn all these settings right here that you see to zero. Velocity is basically the speed they shoot out, and we don't want them to shoot out at all. We want them to just emit and freeze in time and freeze in space. And so that's why we're setting this all to zero. And the size of the emitter, we can make it large, but in this case, we actually want it to be zero. We want it to just emit from a single point. Now, moving on to some more settings, and let's go down to the particle. And we're going to set the life. So how long do these particles last before they disappear? And we'll just set it to, I don't know, five seconds. And before we move on, we need to create a custom particle. Because there's some particles in here that are preset, you know, clouds and smoke and different things, but we actually have to make ours ourselves. And so to do that, we're going to create a new composition. And we're going to call this particle underscore 50, meaning it's going to be 50 by 50 pixels, and it's going to be one frame long. Okay, I'm going to zoom in here, and I'm going to create a new solid, and we're going to make a white solid, and this is important. And let's hit OK. And I'm going to zoom in here, take the pen tool, and we're going to draw a shape on this uh, layer. And it's going to be kind of just a, uh, a thin line type of shape, something like that. And the reason I'm using the pen tool, so it's... So it's not exactly perfect, you know, and it kind of has a little bit of variation to it. So then I'm going to take this layer and I'm going to duplicate it twice. I'm going to do Control D, Control D, and then I'm going to take the first duplicated layer, move it over here, double click on the mask, and then scale it down just a little bit. And just, uh, we're going to put this right there. And if I hit Enter, and then take this duplicated layer, double click on the mask, Scale it down a little bit also, and move it uh, just about here. Then I'm going to take a new layer again, and we're going to take the elliptical uh, mask uh, circle tool, basically, and make a small circle like about that big. And we want to be one about here. Duplicate the layer, Control D, move one over here. Duplicate it again, and let's move one down here. And let's shrink this up just a little bit. Okay, now we need to lower the opacity of all these layers. So let's select the first layer, hold down Shift, select the last layer, hit the letter T, and then click on the number for the opacity and hit 10. And then it'll take them all down. Then we want these three top new layers, basically the circles, to be 25 opacity. So I'm going to select those three, hit T, and hit 25. Um, and that way they're all just slightly more opaque than the other layer. So anyway, that's probably the hardest part we're going to have to deal with. Um, now once we have this particle, let's just drop it into our comp and shut the eye off for it because we don't want to see it. We're going to let the particle generator use it as a particle source. So back to particular, I'm going to scroll down and by the way, F3 brings up our uh, effects controls. And I'm going to go down to my particle setting. And I'm going to just shut these as we go through them. Go down to my particles, set the particle type to custom, and set the custom layer to our particle 50 pixels. And we want to sample, let's see, loop, start at birth and loop. And that way it'll just kind of continue on. All right. Now let's go ahead and start setting up the emitter or the light. So instead of actually animating this, we're just going to use an expression that has some random movement to it. So with the emitter selected, I'm going to hit P to bring up the position. Hold down Alt, click on the stopwatch, and this is going to allow us to type an expression. So what I'm going to type is wiggle, begin parentheses, point five so period five comma one hundred end parentheses what this is going to tell after effects or more specifically this emitter layer is to wiggle the position point five times every second so wiggle every two seconds and offset itself one hundred frames 
so that this little item here, uh, our light, is going to be bouncing around kind of smoothly over time. So I'm going to hit re uh, enter and let's go ahead and preview just our light and let's just see what what it does. Okay, so as you can see, it just kind of moves around, and that's exactly what we want. So now I'm going to go ahead and just turn all these layers back on, and as you can see, we're already starting to generate some random movement, which is exactly what we want. Now, I just saw that our particles are dying a little too soon, so what I'm going to do is go to our particles layer, and we're going to begin to set this effect up. So now let's scroll down and now we're in the particle section. We want the life, say, to be 15 seconds. And this won't actually matter if your comp is longer than that, but just so that they stay up there for at least that long. And we want to, and we want to look at one attribute here, and that is the opacity. We can also change the size, and that's basically the thickness, but I'm gonna go ahead and leave it at five, and we're gonna lower the opacity down to about 50. And so as you can see, it's got these semi-transparent areas and it gets a little bit thicker around the turns when, when we can kind of see them overlapping each other a little bit more. So that's kind of what we want. But now before we go on, let's go ahead and add the coloring effect to our swirlies here. So with the color effects layer that we've already created up, this is the adjustment layer, I'm going to choose effects, color correction, hue, and saturation. And what we're going to do is select colorize and increase the saturation. So depending on what color you want this to be, just uh, cycle through these. And maybe we could do blue. And let's add our glow. Effect, stylize, and glow. And it's pretty much set up how, we, how we're going to actually use it. So let's increase the radius of the glow and the intensity as well. And this is one of those things you really just need to play with. I'm just going to kind of scroll through these to kind of increase it. And let's bring the threshold down to 50%. Okay, so what I'm going to do is start animating this 3D camera. So I'm going to hit P to bring up the position, hold down Shift, hit A to bring up the anchor point or the position of interest. And then I'm going to use these tools up here, the Orbit, Track, and uh, Z Track tool to kind of set up my camera and animation. So first thing I'm going to do is I want to truck in, I want to dolly in and move forward at my 3D layer here. So that looks pretty good. And of course, since this is a 3D particle generator, all of this that we're seeing right now is all 3D. So I can orbit around it and all that stuff. However, we're in sort of a dilemma right now. We need to set the camera's point of interest at this light. So the good thing is the light is our reference point. So let's change our active camera to our top view and let's select the camera and let's bring our anchor point or position of interest closer to where our light is. And as you can see the light is uh, pretty close to it. So that should work and I'm going to go back to my active camera and I'm going to select the orbit tool and like I said we can see that this is actually taking up 3D space. Okay, we can actually animate this, um, but as you can see, it's kind of taking a lot of rendering power to get this to render. Um, it's got the glow and the particles being generated. So we're going to try to speed that up with a great, great uh, little tool inside the particular settings. If we scroll all the way down, we have this thing called Motion Preview. And what this does is creates this basically this little line that renders extremely fast and will allow us to see what we're doing. However, let's shut off the color effects layer for right now while we animate this. So from the beginning here, I'm going to set this stopwatch for the point of interest and the position. And I'm just going to move forward and I'm just going to orbit around um, this a little bit and then take the track tool and bring it back into position and maybe the track Z and just zoom in a little bit just to kind of give it some depth and then I'm going to go to the end of the comp here and orbit back around some more and maybe we'll track uh, zoom out a 
a little bit. So these three tools, there's nothing special to what I'm doing. I'm just trying to give it some random movement as it's animating just to show that it's actually in 3D space. So I'm going to select these two things, hold down Shift, and hit F9 to give it easy ease curves. And then I'm going to select these two keyframes in the middle and right-click and choose Rove Across Time. And what that's going to do is basically position them in the center of the animation so that it's smooth when it gets to them and it doesn't slow down. Sometimes if you have Bezier curves, it can slow down as it goes into the turn and then speed up as it goes out to it. So if we set them as Rove keyframes, they automatically position themselves to not annoy you, which is always a good thing. So Now, some of you out there might be able to set up the uh, animation for the camera without having to use this motion preview in the particles. However, you must be on some high-tech system like a dual Pentium, you know, Pentium 2 system or something like that. And frankly, we just don't have that kind of technology here. So I'm sorry, we have to use the motion preview. But I recommend it. So now when we switch back to the full render and we turn our color effects back on, Okay, uh, by the way, I actually made a slight adjustment to the glow, brought it down to about 0.7, and uh, it was just a little too intense. So let's make that one, 108 and 0.7, so that seems to work all right. Let's just go over a couple of the important things to uh, think about when you're working on this for yourself, and that is how many particles you emit per second. Um, let me show you what happens if I speed up my uh, expression. Instead of making it 0.5, what if I make it 2? So 2 times every second it moves 100 pixels approximately. And what's going to happen is, yeah, exactly, it's going to move very, very fast, and it's going to have a lot of spotting in it. So what you need to do is increase the amount of particles that are emitted per second. So say like 2,000 might even be... Um, needed in order for this to work properly. And what you also want to do is go down to the particles and bring the opacity down. So the opacity and the particles per second, those two kind of go hand in hand because the more particles, the more opaque it's going to be, and you need to kind of uh, balance that out by bringing the opacity down uh, to what you think um, is necessary for this effect to, to look proper. Also, um, I should point out, we're, we're starting to see, once it starts going fast, you start seeing um, the particles are no longer sub-frame, uh, sub-position creating uh, these curves. And what you need to do, um, and this is probably not the best solution, but it is in fact a solution, and that is increase the comps frames per second. So if you make it 90, and you go to your uh, your frame rate and make it 90 in your preview and skip two frames, it'll still play back at basically 30 frames per second. And when you render it out, bring it back into your project and then just put it into a 30, com uh, 30 frame comp. Um, unfortunately, you won't be able to just pre-comp this um, because of the way uh, After Effects handles uh, the particles. and the yeah. Anyway, just take my word for it. First off, let's go ahead and change the color back to like that orange. So I'm going to go change this the hue over to like, how about that? That looks red. Okay, well, I hope you found this tutorial useful. Um, I'd also just like to point out, if you haven't already downloaded or ordered your issue of the new Creative Cow magazine, I would recommend it. It is a good one. Um, you know, Ron, Kathleen, Tim... All the contributing editors, Aaron, um, everyone put together one hell of a magazine. So go check it out. And, of course, you can check out my website, videocopilot.net. All right. Well, thanks for watching. Um, gosh, I wish I had, like, an ending, you know, something I can say at the end of all my tutorials, like. Uh, gosh, I can't think of anything. How about this? Uh, shoot. Shoot.